In today's video, I'm going to share with you three cameras I would love to see refreshed for Micro Four Thirds in 2023. This will be great if you're a hybrid shooter, beginner, photographer, or videographer. So that's sort of like four categories, but there's a lot of crossover. So this video is just based off some things I would love to see released and also a few predictions, hopefully, that come true. Let us know what you think and if you're still shooting Micro Four Thirds, whether these cameras will appeal to you by leaving a comment. Let's get into it. The first camera I'd love to see get refreshed when it comes to Micro Four Thirds is a great entry level camera. It's also an excellent hybrid camera and that would be a new version of the G85 or G95 now featuring that phase hybrid autofocus. There's a couple of reasons why the G85 or an update to the G95 is a no-brainer. If we get that new phase hybrid autofocus, it would be one of the best entry points into an interchangeable lens camera. Still getting lots of features and unlimited recording. So if we can hold on to some of those features with the benefit of the new autofocus system, I think this will wipe the floor when it comes to a lot of those vlogging cameras. Now, while this would be an entry-level camera, I would be okay with it just having one SD card slot. And if you need a camera with two, stay tuned. I'll talk more about those on the other models. But this would be a great point into an interchangeable lens camera system, giving you all the benefits of the video modes and photography in one with a really great IBIS system. So even if they could improve the IBIS slightly, or even if they didn't, the G85 had some of the best IBIS of its time, and it's still very capable even in 2023. If the new version of the G85 gives us a 10-bit option, even if it's 420 instead of 422, I think this would be a game changer for Micro Four Thirds at an entry level price. It would wipe the floor with even cameras that are far more expensive from other brands that still aren't giving us 10-bit codecs. So I hope Panasonic just bump that up to 420 10-bit. Again, it doesn't have to be 422. I think as an entry level camera, that would be more than enough. The last addition I would love to see to this entry level camera is a BLK22 battery, the same that we find on the GH5 Mark II, GH6, or S5, S5 Mark II, and all of the others keep all the batteries consistent. When I used to shoot G85s and GH5s, I always had to have two separate battery chargers with me and also bring USB-C charging in. That would be amazing. So all in all, I think with the new battery improvements and all of the other great features that we know and love about those cameras, paired with the new autofocus, it would be a no-brainer. Second camera I'd love to see refreshed from Panasonic would have to be the G9, which is arguably the best hybrid camera based on its price. The new G9 would be a photographic first camera, but also have really competent video features, much like how it is now, but without the paid firmware update. If they can put V-Log in the G100, put it in all of the new mirrorless cameras moving forward. No one wants to pay for that, just include it. Another feature I'd love to see added is the handheld high resolution mode that we found in the GH6. I think photographers would appreciate that in a photography-centric camera. The new G9 should also support a brand new sensor, whether that's the one from the GH6 giving us 25 megapixel sensor, as opposed to the 20 in the original, I think any resolution bump would be welcomed. If they could somehow push it up to about 30, I think it would be an absolute killer. Let's talk media card storage. When it comes to the G9, I think what they'll do with this camera is go the route of the GH6, giving us a CF Express Type B card slot and an SD card, which don't match. You need two separate types of media, but this will keep photographers happy who want to shoot with faster burst rates if the camera can support it. And of course, you can go the cheaper route if you just want to get a UHS-2 style card. The third camera I would love to see get updated is the camera I'm shooting this with. I'd love to see a brand new Panasonic GH5 Mark III. This would essentially be the GH5 everybody wanted three or four years ago. <laughs> it would give us great phase hybrid autofocus. It would give us all of the excellent video first features all the vector scope waveforms and video tools, anamorphic, all of that kind of stuff. But of course, with the brand new autofocus system. And of course, if Panasonic put a higher resolution sensor in there, that's all good too, but I don't think it needs it. And I think most people who would be looking for a GH5 or GH5 Mark III in this case, would be happy with all the video features, even on some of the older cameras that were video first from Panasonic. They already had all the great tools. They just didn't give us the autofocus that a lot of content cre creators wanted. I've been using autofocus the whole video just to see whether or not it's still usable even on contrast DFD, but I would absolutely love to see a refresh to this camera before the GH6. The GH6 is, in my opinion, a little bit too new just to be sort of dismissing it and bringing out another one. When it comes to the autofocus on a potential GH5 Mark III, I would love to see the phase hybrid autofocus work in all modes. Maybe not in 180 frames per second or whatever the case may be, but just in all the standard video codec modes. So if you're shooting in 60 frames, 30 frames, 25, 24, whatever the case may be. I want that autofocus to work in every single mode. When it comes to the body design, keep it exactly the same as the GH5 Mark II or the original GH5. I don't want a bigger Micro Four Thirds camera for video. One of the reasons I used to travel with Micro Four Thirds extensively 
is for their smaller form factor, but the GH6 kind of tipped that on its head. It's a much larger and heavier camera. So keep the fan out of it. Just keep the heat sink as good as on the GH5 Mark II and it will never overheat. Let us know in the comment section which camera you would like to see get refreshed first when it came to Micro Four Thirds, whether or not you're not interested in it whatsoever and you've already switched to full frame. I have a feeling if Panasonic re-released these cameras with phase hybrid autofocus at a good price point with a small form factor, which was always Micro Four Thirds benefit, these are gonna sell like crazy. Thanks for watching, catch you soon. See ya.